Welcome back to another episode of Real Estate Unfiltered. Today, you guys are in a special treat. I have one of the best marketers I've ever met. And you guys know I'm all, always looking at how to market, how to get more clients, how you can get better at get better at working in your business instead of for your business. So I have this gentleman. I've known this gentleman for about, I want to say five, six months now and met him through a Facebook ad and it just snowballed into a real relationship where I'm calling this man for advice about everything. Any kind of marketing, I'm calling this man for advice. And one thing about him is he always makes time. Even though he's always busy, always makes time for me. So Robert, um, introduce yourself to the people. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Hey guys, my name is Robert Gill and uh, I'm the proud owner of Tuned Up Marketing. I do um, marketing for real estate and mortgage professionals. Uh, and I've been doing this for about four years now. So Rob, um, I'm going to dive right in. This is real estate unfiltered. As I said before, I do not want you to filter yourself. This is to get the truth. I want people to know the behind the scenes of marketing, the dark side, and I'm going to go straight into it. <clears throat> How can online marketing help me generate leads and attract potential buyers for my real estate business, whether I'm a realtor or a LO, like how can it help? So marketing overall is just to make known you know and so how you market yourself it just depends on what avenue you want to choose to make known uh because you can have something to sell you can have you know all these homes that need to get off of the market uh you have you have all these loans that you can definitely sell to borrowers um, but at the same time, if you don't have an avenue of introducing it to other people or to making these options known, it doesn't matter what you sell at the end of the day, um, there, you're not going to really sell anything unless you can make it known. So marketing, a good avenue of what I like to use, for example, is paid media, like advertising or organic media, like posting on social media, like Instagram, Facebook, um, Google, all that good stuff. So that is really the importance because without marketing, uh, marketing is another way that you can look at it is I like to consider it like sales, but so you're basically selling before you sell. 100% because if no one knows about you, how can they buy yeah. from you? Now, how did you get into marketing? Especially you, how did you then get into it and then trans transform it to focus on like the real estate niche? Like you could have been the gym owners, you could have been there's so many other avenues you could have went. Why did you end up going to marketing for real estate professionals? That's a great question. I, I get at, I get asked this from time to time. So the reason of why I got into this was mainly because I was working at a at an electrical company called Power Design, and um, I was trying to figure out how to get out of that job because I was driving. I live in Miami, by the way, and I was driving just about an hour and a half to two hours back and forth so two hours there and two hours back so i started to get my life together um after i, I saw myself so depressed and i was having a lot of uh, medical issues as well at the time so I, I was going through some rough patches but the main reason of why i got started was because i wanted to get out of this job and get out of this nine to five um it really wasn't nine to five, technically, because I had to actually get there. Well, drive, like leave my house, drive there. So I had to leave by seven to get there at nine. And then by the time I leave my job, which was at five, I get there at seven because Miami so traffic was, is just terrible. But the main reason, yeah, it was basically like a seven to seven. Exactly. Um, so from there, I'm just like, you know what? Let me get my sh together and let me wake up at five every single day, cold showers every single day, listen to Jim Rohn, Tony Robbins, you know, Les Brown to listen to all those guys, man. Bro, listen happened? to all those guys. Hold up, hold up. I, 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 like, I got so much more. I got so much more. Um, I started listening to everything. And even though it wasn't specific for anything, it's a, it's a lot of general knowledge. It got my fire burning. So by mm -hmm. the time I was done with my shower i had everything prepared in the morning i had all my gym stuff I, i'm a big gym advocate so there was a gym called equinox next to my workplace over there in university of miami i helped build a university of miami student housing so yeah yeah it was right next to it 
So I was just like, that's the closest gym to my job. I don't have to travel as much because I skip all the traffic and I get an extra hour to hour and a half of working out at the gym. So from there, I was already getting some circulation in my system. I was awake um, and I was doing the best that I can to make sure that in each and every time that I was traveling back and forth, I was listening to all of those guys that were motivational to me. So then it got to the point that there was an opportunity that presented itself to me. So Wait, one of the Ron, biggest- before you, yeah, before yeah. you go further, how did you get into that mindset? Because that's what I want to do. Like, tell us what made you do it. Because most people, they're stuck at the nine to fives. They, they're thinking about joining real estate now, but they don't have that mindset to automatically go and learn. Like, what gave you that push to go into that? So there, there, I don't think um, they're really, I, I think the easiest way to get into that mindset is by utilizing all your pain. A lot mm -hmm. of us don't really have a lot going for ourselves. Like, you know, you don't, you can't really like pump yourself up every single day. That's not likely. I, I, I strongly believe that, you know, the, the whole affirmations thing, where you read yourself, you know, read whatever's on your mirror every day, what, you know, read a card, you know, with all your affirmations every day, that does somewhat work. But if somebody points a gun to one of your family members and says, you need to get this done today, how much motivation are you going to have? Mm -hmm. You're going to be so motivated, man. You're going to be motivated as heck. So you better utilize all of that pain because each and every single day that you live, that is something that is burnt. It's a candle that's burning. You're going to die anyway. And a lot of people don't understand you're going to die. And although it's, it sounds very harsh, it's the truth. So if you're looking at your day that, Hey, this is just one less day of your can of your total life candle being burned down, mm -hmm. you're going to start looking at things differently. But I started watching those videos and I started adopting those habits because of the fact that I was in pain, not only physically with my medical condition, Crohn's by the way, also rid of colitis technically, um, but as well as the pain of just working at a job that it didn't have the best conditions. Like I was working at a like, a, like a little portable office and it had like a million mosquitoes in there. I freaking hate mosquitoes. And I was literally clapping all day because there was mosquitoes that I needed to kill, <laughs> but that, that wasn't me. Like I, I was just on the, I was uh, on a, you know, sit at desk kind of job type of deal. And I had to use portables to use the bathroom. It, it was just freaking disgusting. It was like terrible work environment. I, I just like, I'm tired of this shit, you know? It, it drove you. How long did you work there? I worked with power design for about, I think like a, a little over a year and a half because I had gone through a certain amount of um, time off of work because um, I got sick and I couldn't work and I didn't have the energy or anything like that. Um, and by energy, I mean like I couldn't get up from bed type of deal. Like well, I, I was kind of bedridden. So I went bankrupt, medical. I did all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. It was medical, it wasn't something psychological like you were going through something, correct? Um, I think there are some psychological aspects to it mm -hmm. because when you're sick and you have medical issues, you tend to have um, some issues psychologically. He's like, why is my body failing me? You know, why am I feeling this way? How, like, it sucks that everybody else is normal and I'm not, you know, like those are the types of things that I would think to myself. It's like a lot of self beating up in my life. You know, it's just like, I have that drill sergeant, you know, they're like beating you, like, dude, get your ass up, get your ass to work type of deal. But anyways, so I started adopting those habits because I read a book called Atomic Habits by James Clear. Awesome book if you ever get the chance to read it. Um, and he goes over how to make your life better and how to adopt the right habits. I used to be a big gamer, you know, and I still game from time to time, don't get me wrong. I cave from time to time, but I used to be a big gamer. And so one of the ways that I got, I stopped gaming and stopped adopting those, like, and stopped using those bad habits was by disconnecting the damn Xbox putting it to a freaking closet so far away from you, getting the cord, separating the cord, putting it in another closet. So you're adding so much friction to yourself that you're just like, damn, I want to play a game. Crap, I have to go. I have to go to the closet on the other side of the house, get that, get another cable from the other side of the house and all that stuff. And I was just like, I want to adopt better habits. I wanted to go to the gym each and every morning. 
you know? So I had all my stuff prepared, my shoes next to my bed. I had everything prepared and set, my shaker bottle and everything ready. And it was just so easy for me to adopt those habits because I made it easy for myself. I reduced mm -hmm. the friction of the habits that I wanted to create and I reduced, and sorry, and I increased the friction of the, of exactly, of the habits that I wanted to get away from, the bad habits. So I started adopting those habits. I went to the gym every day. And that, what does that happen to your, to your brain? What happens to your mind and your body? You get more circulation, you get more nutrients. You start to get fit, not only your body, yeah like you start getting better with your body you start getting more self-confidence and so now you feel like you are capable especially when you're listening to the right things each and every day and, and planting those seeds in your mind each and every day sooner or later if you keep watering it it will grow to a big beautiful tree so now from there once i got my shit in order what happened what? I went to a 10x growth conference with Grant Cardone and everybody else. And I bought a course for $50, man. Yeah, 10x, bro. I bought a course for $50. Um, that it was, uh, I think it was Ty Lopez's. It was so general. But you know what? It got me started. And I've joined groups and I joined communities. I'm like, I want to get into this social media stuff. It started, and I want to get into that thirst for knowledge. Exactly. So I already have the right motivation in my head because I had pain driving me and I was planting the right seeds in my head, you know, in terms of ideas. And I was also getting a lot of blood circulation, you know, because of all the exercise I was doing and self-confidence. It was just like, all right, like it's time to level up, you know, my game. And so I went to the 10X Growth Conference. I got more ideas in my head and I'm like, I want to do social media marketing because I feel like that would resonate a lot well with me and it's sales. Mm -hmm. Technically, marketing is sales. So that's where I started joining in. And then an opportunity presented itself because now that you understand what is it that you want and you start feeding into all of the books Those and vibrations. all the knowledge. You if you believe in all, yeah, if you believe in the, um, in the whole, um, the secrets yeah. book, yeah. um, the law of attraction. Well, well, but, but yeah, the law of attraction, I'm just, is it Rhonda Burns? I believe so. I can't remember. I'm drawing a blank on who the, the actual Yeah, I, I forgot the name of the, uh, I'll, I'll figure it out later. But what? it's the secret and you believe, you know, in manifestation and all that stuff in the law of attraction. That does exist, but you really need to put in a lot of effort because you, if you only say it and you only believe it, it just won't come to you like that. You need to put in the effort to learn more and explore those paths. Because what happens is that if you open one door, right, what happens is that you can only see so far to the next door. You don't know what's behind those doors. Mm -hmm. But just, just keep on believing that if you look far away, it looks very blurry. But as you get closer and as you start opening more doors, what happens as you get closer, it starts to get less blurry. And now you know where your path is going. And it's okay if you want to get started and you have already gotten started and you figure out that it's not for you, there's nothing wrong with taking a step back, starting all over. Because now you have, you never really start from zero. Now you have this. Why do so many people feel like once you fail, it's game over? Like, how did that, or how do you, in your opinion, where do you think that mindset comes from? Because a lot of people are like, oh, if I try this and it doesn't work out, then I failed. And it's like, it creates this embarrassment instead of saying, you know what? That just didn't work out. Let me try something else. Because I need validation from other people. And once you detach from the validation of others and you stop caring what other people think, what your parents think about you, what your friends think about you, and you get out of that circle, you know, like that bubble in your head, then you can start being able to move forward. But to answer your question, the reason of why they're so afraid of failure is because it's an unknown. They don't know what's going to happen after and probably they've never failed before. But if you are a master of failure and you've been literally failing every single day, I don't think it's a failure because you're always learning something and it, it, you'll fail to the point where you're successful. I if you keep trying. I forget a quote, but they say, um, I'm going to fail fast and quick and fail as many times as possible because then you figure out ways. Okay, that didn't work. I remember that. That didn't work. I think that's so Mark Zuckerberg. Yep eventually you find out how it actually works. So now 
Yeah, yeah. You figure out, okay, I'm going to do something online. I'm going to do a marketing. Yep. Now, what pushed you to real estate? Was it Grand Cardone? What pushed you to actually go? That is a estate? great question. So now, all right. So just to continue on with the story, there was a man, a very tall, handsome man goes up to me and... Was it me? <laughs> well, I've, I've actually never shook your hand in person, so I, I, I don't know how tall you are, bro. But l- let me tell you, this guy, um, and the reason why I say tall and handsome, because he actually was a model. Um, and it was at a Chipotle that he met me, and it had a long sleeve that said power design on there. And so he goes up to me, He's, he was looking at me all weird, and I was just like, why is this guy looking at me? You know, and like, why does he, why does he keep staring at me? As I walk out, he stops. He's like, hey, you, real quick. Are... I'm like, yeah, me? He's like, yeah, yeah, you. I'm like, what? He's like, man, do you do web design? Because I see your I see your shirt. I see your long sleeve. It says power design. I'm like, oh, no, no, man. I don't do web design. Like, this company is not web design. I'm sorry. But how can I help? <laughs> and that's how it started. How can I help? And so what happened was that he asked me for web design services. I like he fig- he told me everything that he needed and I'm like, I can help you out. Did I actually know that I can help you out? No. Took the opportunity but, before. But I was willing to freaking figure it out. That was more of like one of those fake it till you make it type of situations, right? But you know what? I hired somebody else to do it overseas for $50 and I charged them 500. I made a 10x return on my investment right there. I got I got the client and he referred me to other people too. So it was just web design at first. You know, and it was just like that was like one, I had just one or two clients just like that. And mm-hmm. then I really transitioned over to the social media marketing situation. So then from there, what happened was that I was marketing for different kinds of fields because I had left the job without having too much in savings. I took a risk on myself. I do not recommend this by the way. Mm-hmm. I do not recommend this because this is definitely a big no-no when it comes to getting out of a job. I left my job because I confided in myself so much to the point where I'm just like, I need to figure this out in a month and I need to start making money in a month. I only have like, I only had like, I would say like $500, 500 to almost a thousand dollars left in my bank account. And I had a 500 something dollar car payment. Um, and I'm just like, I got to get the hell out of here. I am so unhappy. And there was another company that was a vendor of power design. It was a VP, Steve Mayer. I still remember to this day. I called them up because um, I was looking for another job or another opportunity while I was, you know, getting the business up there. And um, he told me, I'll hire you, but you need to be a truck driver. I'm like, hell no, I'm not going to be a truck driver. I'm not going to start from zero. I already know a lot about this industry. I already know about a lot about all of this, but I'm not going to start from zero. I have a marketing company and I'm going to stick by my guns and I'm going to figure this out. And he's just like, you do marketing? I'm like, yes, I'm doing marketing. And he's just like, why don't we do this? Come to Ocala. I have, a, I have an equestrian farm and I need more horses for my stalls. And I'm like, what? You have a farm? And he's like, yeah, I have an equestrian farm. And we do, um, we, we train up these horses and do all this stuff for them. And we take care of them. You know, we charge like anywhere from a thousand to $3,000, depending on the service. And I'm like, okay, I'll drive up there. Little did you know that I only had, by the time I was actually going to drive up there, I had less than a hundred dollars to my name. I had already burned all the money. I had already gone through it and I was literally losing my, losing my mind already. I was desperate for business. And so I went over there and I remember this day, I even got Dunkin' Donuts when I was driving up there. It was a four hour drive, Malcolm. And as I was up there, I went to Dunkin' Donuts, bought some donuts. It was $10 and 69 cents. I wish I saved the receipt, but I remember that bill like it was yesterday because I barely had any money. And I, and I was just like, this Dunkin' Donut, Donuts hurt right now. <laughs> this hurts, but I need to come with something, you know, like something to offer, like, hey, something that I can bring because that's, that's how, 
I'm, I'm Cuban and that's like our form of hospitality. When you go over somebody's house um, or business, like you bring something, you know? And so I got there, I took a tour of the entire, you know, the entire equestrian farm. And then uh, he goes to, I go to him. He's like, I'll do your social media marketing services for 1200. And he's like, I'll do it for 900. I'm like, deal. And I got my first real marketing client and it was an equestrian farm problem <laughs> there was a big problem walking? man there was a big problem after three months i filled them completely up with horses you did he had i completely did you know how, to, how did you even figure out how to market to that you figure it out man you you try and try because marketing it isn't like do it one time and that one time is going to work you need to have so many different tests so many different like variables to try out all at once and then there's going to be some that work better than others and so you just turn off the ones that don't work and keep the ones that are working on and then start testing against that so you can get even better results and so, so that was what happened what <laughs> what pushed me into real estate is because my entire family what i would i wouldn't say my entire family some family members my ex's families um, and uh, a lot of my friends were real estate agents and loan officers. So I, I try to help them as much as possible. I was doing it more for them. And I did a little bit of wholesaling in the past. But the reason of why I transitioned over to real estate, because I needed to niche down into something. I started with equestrian farms. I did clothing companies. I did whatever I can get my hands on, man. I was knocking on doors and a lot of people know me around, you know, Miami Lakes, where I used to do a lot of my work. A lot of people know me because I was knocking on their business, chiropractors, doctors, restaurants, anything I can get my hands on. And luckily I was able to get some of their business and my focus was way too diluted. It was so difficult, you know, working on so many different kinds of businesses and being so customized. When you're customized, it's really difficult to scale your business to a certain point. But when you niche down, you know what to do each and every time for that business and how to gain them results. And so that's why I chose real estate and mortgage. And that's tuned up marketing. So what online marketing strategies do you recommend for real estate professionals to build their brand and increase visibility in the digital space? So if you're looking for more brand recognition, you have to be posting and posting as much as you can. So there's different platforms that are, it's more reasonable to, how would I say to post more often before people start on following you? Like Twitter, you can post as much as you want, Yeah, you know, and, and no, no, nobody really like, you know, gets annoyed with you. But if you do Instagram, a couple posts a day, and now that you have stories, you can basically post as much as you like, and it's no big deal. But the more volume you put out, the better the results that you get. And so creating the brand and making sure that it has its own identity and not attach it to the owner, is a big deal because now the brand itself can have its own brand identity and has also enterprise value. So if the date if the date you know comes where you decide that you want to sell that business, you can sell it because you are detached from that business. Your name and your face is detached from that business. Because if you attach it to yourself, what happens? You need to sell you as well as part of the business. And so you so, can't really do that. So there's that, no enterprise value. That goes into, I guess, the um, the next question would be when you're creating your own personal brand and then versus creating a brand for the business, meaning like a team or something like that, you're saying make sure you detach the two. So for whatever reason happens, if you decide to sell your team off or you decide to leave, it can run without you. Exactly. All the systems, all the automations, um, all the procedures, everything has to be laid out for any potential buyer that will be interested in buying your company. If you really wanted to go that route at the end of the day, but you don't have to. I noticed you're very big on systems. Can you explain why you feel like systems are so important? And, and obviously the automation process, because you helped me with my CRM. And that was one of the things that we first ran into when I first did it sign up for the program and stuff like that? My automations, my CRM, you know, my systems weren't there, my backend. So why so, is that so uh, important to you? So systems are so important because without the systems, there's no playbook. 
It's just like you go out into a football field and let's say you love football and you want to play a game of football and you want to outplay your competitors. If you don't have a game plan, if you don't have the playbook, you know, of different kinds of plays, you're going to be uncoordinated. You're going to be all over the place. Imagine a bunch of football players just running around, you know, like headless chickens. You know, it, it makes no sense that that really doesn't work. But now systems is what keeps your company structured in a way that runs smoothly. And automations are a way to buffer those systems so that all your employees potentially or yourself don't have to work as hard to be able to get the same job done. So let's say if, here's a here's a great one. So let's say you need to send out a text message each, each and every time somebody books an appointment with you. You always see yourself texting somebody each and every time. Hey, thank you for booking an appointment. You know, I'll call you at this time and send you the reminders instead of you sending those reminders manually and in person, like taking your time, each and every one of those take 30 seconds to a minute to produce. So if you have the automations to do it automatically, it starts to compound. You get all your time back now because you have the automations that take care of you now. Now, tell me this, you, you kind of explained it a little bit, but I want you to dive in. How can social media platforms be leveraged to effectively market for leads, but also maybe if I'm a realtor, showcase my listings? Because what I see, what I notice on um, Instagram specifically, is a lot of realtors just say, hey, I'm doing an open house but it doesn't invite me to want to bring clients as a mortgage loan officer. If a client sees it, unless you like the house, it's not doing as much. So what would you suggest? So nowadays there aren't that many pretty houses and a, and a lot of sellers, they don't really want to do the best job that they can to make it look, to, to showcase it properly. Okay. So when you post it out there, you, unless it's a beautiful house, you're barely going to get any hits. Mm -hmm. So, you need a different value proposition. You need a different offer. And so depending on how you offer or you what you offer, what a value proposition is a value proposition is just something or an offer that presents value to the consumer. The consumer being the person that's on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, those guys are basically okay. You use a social media platform to just scroll and see what your friends are doing, right? Mm -hmm. But that is also a way for the platform to capitalize because now they have your attention. Attention is probably the most important asset aside from time that you can have because now you can, a whole bunch of people. Yep. yep. Now you can pay Facebook, Instagram, and Google to get in front of those people, depending on what kind of client or what type of consumer they are based off the demographics and all that stuff. Now you can get in front of them and you can showcase your properties or you can showcase, you know, an offer to them to be able to generate those leads. So what is one of your, um, this is, I just want people to understand what you do because they say, Hey, he's an online market, but how's he going to help me? So I want you to talk about your business a little bit, but yeah. what are one of your value propositions that you utilize to get clients for the people, to get leads or potential clients for your customers? So I like to do things to a one-to-many concept. So I don't, I, I love doing one-to-ones and there's nothing wrong with that. But I love doing a one to many concept because, for example, my clients, my realtors and LOs, they personally get in front of an audience. I, we get them in front of an audience of hundreds and hundreds of home buyers. And then as they are in front of that audience, they need to provide something of value. And what we like to use is education. Education is always valuable. And so especially when a lot of people aren't really going to college as much as they used to anymore. You know, they need to get educated on what's happening in this current housing market, whether it's good or bad. That is what that educational platform is. So we've created that educational platform. We get that realtor and mortgage professional inside of that educational platform. We introduce them as an expert and all the home buyers that are there are eager to learn what the process is. And then during that webinar, they're offering a free one on one consultation to get them started. Simple as it is a very, very simple concept. How do we find the buyers through social media by advertising Google, Facebook, and Instagram. And then that's from there, those clients pay me to be able to facilitate that for them. And that's how I make my money. That's exactly what I was about to ask you. So diving into that more, what are, are there any specific online advertising platforms or tools that you could recommend 
for targeting a specific audience or demographic for real estate purposes. So what do you recommend that these realtors or LOs use to target? Is it Facebook? Do you prefer Google? Like, what do you think? I think the, you know, Meta is both Facebook and Instagram, by the way. So Facebook and Instagram are a must. Same thing with Google. Those are the three platforms I mainly use. Now, what tools? Ma majority being use? Facebook and Instagram, sorry. What tools do you use? In terms of automations and systems? Well, you could talk about both for um, automation systems or even advertising. Like, are there any specific like URLs that you like going to? Um, someone told me about one recently that is good for like copying other people's ads before or copying what other people are advertising to their demographics, their list, and then, then transferring that to Facebook. Is that something that you do too? So, so we do, uh, that, that's a great question. Okay, I see what you're saying. So we create our own copy, but mm. now that AI is a thing and it's really getting, you know, it's really getting out of hand how good it's getting. Um, we use ChatGPT4 to be able to make copies of it or different variations of it. So we can do a lot of testing. Um, between the ads for the images and the creatives, uh, we use Canva. It's a, it's a very simple software so that I can, you know, I can create pictures and there's automations you can use as well with that. I use Zapier to connect all the softwares and systems together. And I use Go High Level to be able to, um, to manage my database and to contact, you know, all the clients, all the borrowers, um, to have all the funnels and everything there. Wow. Thank you. Um, yeah. you just shared your whole blueprint. Like, yeah, that's how it. Come you did that. You did that without hesitations. A lot of times when you talk to people and they, especially going under the hood of their business, a lot of people are like, oh, I don't know if I can share that. I'll share some tips. Why are you so open to just sharing what you're doing? That's working. Because, yeah. um, this actually this comes from the famous Alex Hormozzi. Well, he's big now compared to how he was a, a few years back, but I, I was looking at his stuff for, you know, a very long time now um there's something that he always says that if you give 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 some yeah. more and give some more you'll never get less and you can take that promise to the bank if you give 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 some more and give some more you'll never get less that is something that always stuck to me so i don't mind sharing all my secrets you just won't be able to do it better than i can <laughs> So that's, that's, you know, we've already been doing this for a while We're we're industry leaders on this. So you, you can try to compete with me and I'd actually be okay with that. I'd be totally okay with that because I haven't looked at what my competition is doing. I never look at what my competition is doing. I never compare myself to any other competitors. I compare myself to myself and my team, that's you know, sick. so I'm always looking within and how to grow from within, not from all my external circumstances. Because you can't control what the external and what the other guys are doing. You can only control what you're doing, you know, right now, you know, right here. So what role do you think search engine SEO, search engine optimization play in the real estate industry? And how can it be utilized to improve the online visibility of a listing or of getting better leads do you use seo or are you just like no i don't really touch that i'm more facebook i never touch seo i never I touch seo yeah. i think that's a that's an outdated way of advertising well not advertising of marketing um it's just better for your search engines so if you're really relying off of pay-per-click having a good seo is really good i just don't really do pay-per-click because there's um there's something called ceasefire that will prevent fake bots and all that stuff from clicking on your links. Cause every time they, you click or somebody clicks on your link, you're paying for that. And so they have created bots, competitors have created bots to be able to automatically click on other advertisers um, links. So they drive your ad costs out and get you out of the business. Wow. So it's, it's, it's nuts, it's nuts. So Google now owns YouTube, get into YouTube, you know, get find different avenues that are much more profitable because cost per acquisition is a big thing. So if your cost per acquisition is $100, just an example, is $100 and you're making a thousand, I'm gonna spend $100 every day or as much as I can. I'll put in a thousand, 10,000, 100,000 so I can make a million. You know, and that's how, that's how it all works out. But you need to find the right avenues to be able to generate yourself some income. Um, so th that, that's a big deal. So finding which platform works best for you 
I don't know. I don't know what that is. You just have to try it for yourself. Trial and error is a big thing. Yeah, you talk about trial and error a lot. You mentioned it and when you were doing your ads, you said you shot GPT and you do you testing. Are you always testing to stay up to date? Like, or are you just testing to see how you can get better? Both. It's definitely both. So we already know what works. We have templates of what ads and copywriting and all that stuff that works best and what funnels and what websites work best to be able to get results for our clients. But we already know what's working, what's proven. Now you always try to test for something else because if you can get the ad cost to be $5 per lead or registration, you know, and then you try something else and it gets you $3.50 or $4 per cost per registration, even though your stuff is proven, now you have something that's even more proven that, that gets you cost per lower. You know, now, now you found something else out that's even better. And so the search for improvement, there's no, per, there's no such thing as perfection here. There's just some things work and then they work until they stop working. So that's why it's a good thing to keep testing and keep finding different avenues um, to be able to market your offer. Because if not, you're going to go out of date and, you know, your competitors will crush you. Now, are there any emerges, emerging trends that you think will change the online marketing, especially for real estate professionals? Like I, you mentioned using AI before. Are there any other things that you think that, hey, as a realtor, you need to start doing this before your competitors do it? Even though you don't have the scarcity mindset, um, what advice would you give? So there are some software that you can use. This is this is a big trend that's going on right now. There are some software that you can use that allows AI to basically, you can create an entire sales bot for yourself where it literally converses with the borrower like it's you. And it, you know, the way that you reply to the bot, it'll reply back to you. Like, like if an actual human is replying back, you know, and it, and it isn't templated or anything like that. There, it, actually, it actually is coming out with an, with a real logical answer based off of parameters that you give it. You can give it all this information. It's like, hey, I want you to act as a sales bot or I want you to act as a follow-up or an appointment setter. Um, you link it with your appointment um, system, whether it's Cadenly, Go High Level, whatever it is, you link it up all together. And then it gets to the point where it guides that borrower, it guides that buyer or seller to booking an appointment on your calendar. And it even tells them like what different kinds of bookings or times are available so they can book them. And once they agree to something, it'll tell them, great, you know, I'll go ahead and book you now. Um, just look out for your email, you know, for uh, the invite, like little things like that. And you don't have to do anything. AI does it all for you. So that's a big trend that's going on right now. I like that. So it's combining AI and then also booking or whatever. So having both of them work for your business will obviously what the biggest thing is save you time. Now, yeah. do you feel like that's going to make more real to the loan officers lazier? Because now they're so used to letting AI or they'll be trying to let AI do everything that maybe they'll start getting lazy. Do you think that? Well, I, I think uh, humanity is getting lazier as we speak because, you know, let, let's go back to the 1900s um when cars were becoming a big thing you know of course like we can either be on horses or we can walk everywhere or, or utilize a bike or we can be lazier and think about it this way it can be lazier and we created a car that takes us longer distances and now we're more efficient with our time so yeah we're gonna get lazier absolutely but now it just it just frees up a lot of your time to be able to do more pri more higher priority tasks and so you can leverage AI to just gain your time back. And so now you can be more efficient and you can be more productive. How do you figure out what are the higher tasks for a business owner to do? Like, for example, you're running your own business. How do you figure out, okay, this is good for me. And just a template of what you utilize, like what kind of functions do you figure out? Because as a loan officer, even as a realtor, there's so many tasks that we can fill a mundane, but some of them you actually need to do to grow your business. So how do you figure out? So you have to prioritize what moves the needle in your business. That is it. Everything else delegated to another team member. Mm -hmm. That is it. Whatever moves a money needle and whatever propels your company to do better, make more money, help your clients out better, produce a, a higher quality of service. All of those things that move the needle is what you should be focusing on. 
as, so especially are, as an owner or a CEO. What are the, those for your business? So providing a higher quality of service for our clients, meaning that we get them more high qual higher quality borrowers, meaning that they have higher credit, higher income, um, and getting more volume for them. And as well as improving the quality of the webinars and the education that is being put out there so we can attract a bigger audience. Not only that, but we can get more motivation out of these calls because motivation level is a big thing. I can have, I can be qualified to be a buyer in today's market condition, but if I don't want to work with you or not motivated, you know, to work with you, who cares? Exactly. You know, there's no point. So that's one of the things. The other thing is what strategies am I going to use to decrease my cost per acquisitions and increase the amount of leverage that I have to be able to gain more clients. So that's a bit like, for example, leveraging advertising, running different types of advertising, figuring out different platforms that may work better for me. So like little things like that and transitioning over different funnels, different everything. So figuring out what drives the business and what makes the business more money and produces a better, more satisfied customer or client for our service and to produce more referrals will definitely propel our business forward. So, and those are the tasks that you as a CEO decide to focus on what moves my needle the most. Yeah. And if I find something that is taking up a lot of my time to work in the business instead of on the business, I do my best to figure, to find somebody to delegate that work to. I like it. Now, how do you figure out, how do you pick who you're going to hire? Like, how do you do it? Like, do you do a virtual assistance? Cause I was talking with some uh, gentlemen on a podcast last week and he was very big on hiring virtual assistants and figuring out how to utilize them because <laughs> the time is cheaper. How do you feel about that? Do you like virtual assistants or, or do you mind hiring from the Philippines or different countries or do you stay here when you hire your team members? So I'm biased because I have a personal experience mm -hmm. between hiring from different countries. You know, I'm, I'm Hispanic. You know, and I'm here in Miami where we have a bunch of different cultures. So I am far from discriminating any any kind of race, color or gender um, because I am myself a, mon a minority. Um, but I would say Philippines is amazing for administrative work. I find higher quality administrative workers from the Philippines pay them anywhere from five to seven dollars an hour and they're very happy with that because that can be a lot of money for them and obviously if you pay them more than that over time they're just living so well over there and they're going to be so happy working for you mm -hmm. now if you're looking for somebody to speak on the phone on your behalf like an assistant that calls i would say mexico because mexico is the closest thing to the united states and uh, a lot of those guys actually um, study English very, very well. And the accents come naturally, especially, you know, for clients that are down here in South Florida or in Florida overall, we have a lot of Hispanics here. So if they have a slight Hispanic accent, that's not bad at all. That's that's a good thing here in, in, in our in our market. But you can find somebody that speaks perfect English in, in Mexico and pay them just about the same that you can pay in the Philippines, maybe a little bit higher, though. What site would you use to find these people? What, what was that? What website would you use if I'm looking to find these people? What website would you recommend? I don't use websites. I use advertising and I advertise what? to the area. So it's just like, hey, I just everything that I want and need, I just put ads for because everybody is on social media. You know, even people from Mexico, even people from Philippines. I see a lot of the people that work under me. They're always posting on social media and I like all their stuff. I like their stories. You know, and everybody's eyeballs are on these social media. It's a big, big addiction. It's a, a like globally it's a big addiction. So I am, I will pay to get the, uh, those eyeballs on my ads. So if it's a recruiting kind of ad, perfect. And I get thousands, I mean, thousands of people applying, you know, and submitting their voice recordings and all that stuff. And then we just go through all of them. It's a lot of manual work. Sure. But that's what it takes to find a good person. Oh, I like that. I like how you put it back. I'm an advertiser. I like it. Okay. So how <laughs> important is content marketing in the real estate field? And what type of content should I focus on, on creating and engaging and attracting potential clients? Just don't <laughs> dance on TikTok. I'm not, I'm not knocking hard on those people that dance on TikTok. It's all good. If you love it and you, and it works for you, great. But 
It just, just depends on what you're selling. If you're selling homes, post a lot about homes. There are a lot of people, especially on YouTube, for example, that this is what $10 million buys you in California. And then they show you a house that's beautiful. You know, and they give you an entire tour of the house and it gets millions of views because they're just like, wow, like the headline was great, right? Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, it just it just really attracts you because like, wow, this is what $10 million buys me in San Diego, California or Los Angeles, California. This is what a like a $35 million house looks like. This is what you can buy with $30 million, you know, in Beverly Hills, you know, and that's and then people start flocking to it because they love seeing beauty like that. So like little things like that will literally get in front of your audience and then will allow you to get a lot of people booking appointments, especially from luxury buyers too. If like they see the way that you're getting all that traction for one of their um, sellers, the, you're going to get a lot of people that are similar to that wanting to work with you as well. So you just gave you're, 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 you're right there. You just told me how to get more. If you're looking to get in the luxury market, he just told you what to do. That's phenomenal. Well, you you, you got to also relate to them too, because I, I'm not saying you should drive a Ferrari to like put yourself at that level, but you should definitely get to the point where you can afford nicer things. So you can at least fit their kind of frame and lifestyle and you can kind of blend in with them. So they see you as one of them and they can relate to you because those guys usually have already the people that they've already want to work with. So you have to be just like them or at least close to, you know, to blend in like a chameleon with them to be able to at least, you know, get a seat at the table. I like that. Get a seat at the table. Um, can you provide an example of a successful online marketing um, campaign or strategy that you did? And in the last year, tell us the story. We're all about stories here on this podcast. So. Tell us a story about so, somebody you helped. About somebody that, has helped, that I've helped or a successful yeah. ad campaign or something? Yeah, the ad campaign for the, a loan officer, realtor, like I want to hear like how it impacted them, what the campaign looked like. Like, give me the story. So I can just relate back to the webinars. We just okay. put, put, yeah, we can just, we, we do ad campaigns to educate home buyers about, you know, how to buy your next home in today's crazy market, how to help them save thousands of dollars and hours of time. That alone attracts so many people, especially first time home buyers. Mm -hmm. So if you love first time home buyers, it's a great way to work with them. And now you just have to filter them out and, you know, get to the quality of people. Cause a lot of people smoke hopium and they hope that they can buy their next home in today's crazy market without Wait, any money. They smoke, what? They smoke hopium. hopium. Yeah, they're smoking hopium because they <laughs> hope that they can buy, you know, their, you know, a home in today's crazy market, you know. So, it, and it has been crazy these past few years. Um, it's gone, it's gone through a lot of ups and downs. Let me tell you, but um, there's a lot of people that think that they can buy a home and they're totally unprepared. Mm -hmm. So now it's up to the the agents or it's up to the loan officers to help them get prepared, uh, or at least to educate them on how to get prepared. So once they're ready. You have to be in top of mind and they can go to you afterward and you can top have that long term key. sequence, long term nurture. Yeah. So that's, that's one of the ad campaigns for realtors. For example, it's more of a custom homes list, simple and easy campaign, create a list that matches exactly what you're looking for of homes that match, you know, your criteria. Exactly. That is an easy ad campaign that you can utilize to attract people based off of certain um, price points, you know, custom, uh, you can get free custom homes list of homes that are between 450,000 to 750,000, you know, and you'll start to see that the people that click on it, they usually tend to have a little bit more money in their pockets and you weed out some of the people that have lower incomes, um, without redlining and without being against compliance. Yes. You do it in a way ethical. where it's actually ethical and you're not discriminating against people whatsoever. And so that's what I like about all of this, that we, everything that we do is ethical and is following compliance, a fair housing, equal, you know, opportunities, all that stuff. Um, but then from there, you, uh, you can tell you focus on real estate because a lot of um, warning, a lot of people who go into this business, they don't know the real estate. So they don't know about the Fair Housing Act. They don't know about there's a lot of compliance that you need to follow when you're doing ads, especially on Facebook, Instagram and stuff like that. So just him telling you those, giving you a list of things shows how well versed he is in this field. Keep going. No, no, it's you're on the money with that, man. 
And I know you know what you're talking about because you have really good questions. Um, but at the same time, once they actually click on the ad and they fill out their information, give them a call. Give them a call within five minutes. Speed to lead is everything. In a day where we have so many things that grab our attention, you need to get to them as fast as possible before something else grabs their attention or life gets in the way or you know they you know their their baby starts crying they have to go take care of that and then they just completely forgot that they filled out their information to be able to you know inquire about what you have to offer and so when you call them up you're just like hey you know i can definitely create the custom homes list for you no problem what kind of home are you looking for single family multifamily all right so you figured out what home you'd like all right are you looking to buy you know soon and you know in the next couple of months tell me about your timeline all right how much, you know, how much are you looking to buy? 450, 500, tell me more about that. Have you been pre-approved for that? Yes or no? And if you haven't, what does your credit score look like? All right, if, you know, if your credit score is good, what about your income? How's your income look like? All right, is it, you know, are you a first time home buyer or do you have a home that you currently sell? Or are you looking to sell? It's like, all right, perfect. And last but not least, are you working with a realtor or are you working with a loan officer right now? Yes or no? And then great. Awesome. So you know what? It seems like you're a good fit. This is how we can help you. Either you can book an appointment or you can just help them out right away. Like little things like, like that. Right? I just gave you an entire call script. You did. And of, of questions to ask. You. Yeah, because I've done this so many times. I've trained an entire team of ISAs, virtual assistants is what we call them. Um, an entire team of virtual assistants to do this and do all these calls for our clients. This is an old offer that we used to have, but we just found that the educational platform is much more profitable and it helps out in a much larger scale. I like that. Profit and helps. Helps the masses mm -hmm. and you make more money. Um, how do you feel about um, realtors and LOs actually data tracking, like tracking how many followers they have, how many people are liking their posts? Do you think they need to or? It just depends. It all, that is a very big, it depends kind of question because you can have as much engagement as you'd like. You can have as many views as you'd like. You can have as many people commenting as you'd like, but if you don't have them leading to a opt-in where they opt in their information for an offer, if you don't have an offer, all that goes to waste. You know, you're just, you're like, you're keeping your followers and your engagement on the social media platform, meaning the followers and all that engagement is not yours. The ownership mm. of that information is Google, Facebook, Instagram, right? Or repeat Twitter that. or Snapchat. Repeat that. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people don't understand that. Please repeat that again. So you can have as much engagement as you want, or you can have as many eyeballs on your profile, or you can have as many views as you'd like. Um, but it doesn't matter unless you have an offer, because if you don't get their information, their information stays within Google, Facebook, and Instagram, and they're the ones that are the owners of that information. So once they opt into your landing page or your email sequence or something that you have to offer, now you own all that information. You own their name, their, well, you don't own them, but you own their contact info is what I'm trying to say, all their data. So the name, the number, and the emails, you can own that now and, ba and you can utilize that for so many different types of aspects. So you can send them emails, you can send them texts, you can use that for retargeting and, you know, and and use that for multi-platforms as well. Like, all right, I got this person from Instagram. Let me target that person also on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, whatever. You know, and so now that I have their information, I can plug that into the other aspects and have something called omnipresent retargeting. I like it. Explain what omnipresent <laughs> retargeting is. It's when you show up in every freaking platform. They cannot get rid of you. Literally everywhere you go, there, there was this guy, his name was Alaric Heck. I signed up for his $30,000 course and the man, um, I, I would say that I could not get this man off of my feet. I would go to weather.com and you see him like this, like posing, <laughs> just like at outreach, you know? And like, I was just like, I cannot get rid of this guy. How can I be him or how can I utilize his strategy so I can be as sticky as that guy? And so that's what basically the same thing. Yep. You cannot get rid of that guy. You click on one of his ads or you submit your information to him, you will not be able to get rid of that guy unless you opt out of like everything, you know? So it's a very good tactic. Question now, what is your approach 
Wait, matter of fact, I'm not even answering that question yet. I, I'm still, my head is still going on it. Can you explain <laughs> how we can get the client off? You said you should have them opt into like a landing page or some kind of funnel. Like as a realtor, you gave me one already. How can I do that? So as a realtor, I have a listing. I, I'm getting eyeballs. What should I do? What should I say? What can I offer? Like, give me some advice to get it. How do I even create a landing page? Like, break it down for me as if I know nothing about the social media marketing. Okay, so I'll try to break it down for you as lowest level as possible. Because when you're when you're at a certain level, you can get really fancy with your words and you can get really fancy with like certain topics, right? So I'll try to break it down for you as you know as simple as possible. So there's something called a funnel. Right. And this funnel is basically how you drive traffic from a social media platform or any kind of plat platform, whether it's pay-per-click, whether it's LinkedIn, whether it's Google, Facebook, Instagram, that is basically um, the top of the funnel where you're just getting as much traffic as you can. So okay. to be able to gain that traffic, you need to have some kind of an offer that attracts your audience. So you need to have good headlines, good, a really good irresistible offer where people feel stupid saying no. Um, Give me an example of an offer. Of, would... of, an, of an offer? Yeah, that you so, would suggest. So you need to market out to a starving audience, people that are really craving this. So for example, our offer is how to buy your next home in today's crazy market, how to save thousands of dollars and hours of time. Um, and I market that out to people that are just starting the home buying process because they don't know anything about it. Yep. So something like that would really be useful and that will be an offer, for example. And so let's say that offer attracts so many buyers, right? Or so many people to at least click on your website. And so now all the people that clicked on your website, there's gonna be people that do not opt into your registration or do not give your emails or do not give your name. So now you'll start noticing what's a funnel do. They get slimmer as you get to the bottom, right? So that's right. what happens. You get traffic at the top, you get a lot of people, right? And then you'll start noticing that now you're getting to middle of funnel where people actually register or give you their info. Not mm -hmm. everybody's gonna give you their info. So that's why it's getting slimmer. You're getting middle of the funnel there. And so now once they register, they're like, all right, how can I get them to book an appointment on my calendar? So. I'm attracting them versus chasing them, mm. right? That's a, that's a big deal. Like yes. that is a, that is a big shift that I had to learn early in the game. So I am not chasing people down because I hate being telemarketed to, I hate being called cold called or whatever. And I'm just like, I'll never do this ever again. How can I get them to be incentivized to book an appointment on my calendar on my time so that my time is well kept. I can be efficient with my time and they're coming to me for advice and they're coming to me for suggestions on how to be able to move forward. So from there- it also shows that time is valuable too. Because of course. you're like, hey, this is the schedules I have and these are my time slots. But keep going, keep going. This is no, you're, you're on the money there. So it's kind of like when you're, when you're, let's say your ankle's hurting or your elbow is hurting, what do you do? You go to a doctor and you book an appointment, right? That's that's how it is. It's, it's a very simple aspect to it. So now, booking the appointment, you have all these people registering, right? Now, how many people book appointment? There are less people booking appointments than the amount of people that register. So mm -hmm. now that's how it keeps getting slim. That's how it keeps slimming and slimming down. And so from there, all those appointments, you are now credit, you, you increase your credibility. You have a higher perceived value of, you know, um, what was, it, it was a fraction. And I'll, and I'll get into the, the value proposition and how you calculate value, mm -hmm. but as you get down to the bottom of the funnel, all those appointments, there's gonna be a smaller amount of people that actually buy out of all those appointments because now you have to start selling, now you have to start educating, and now you have to like get them through the process. And all the way at the end of the funnel is buyers equally income for yourself. And so how you create those headlines, how you create the ads, I just showed you. You can use ChatGPT to create you know a list of headlines that you can just try out um, different kinds of copies, as long as you give them a good offer of what you have to offer, you have to create that for yourself, you know, or you can use AI as well to help you create offers based off of what the pain points are for a certain client or a, okay. a certain type of consumer. You have to be very broad with how many people you can help out. The less people you can help out, the higher your cost per acquisitions are, 
but it gives you the opportunity to charge more for your service because you're so specialized. Mm. So you can charge higher tickets. Like what you did. Riches in the niches. So from there, how you create the ads you, and the pictures and you know, videos, you can use Canva, you can use uh, Adobe um, Premiere Pro to be able to edit all those videos. Or there's all, a ton of different software that you can utilize. You can just figure out which one works best for you. Now you need a system to follow and automate the entire process for yourselves. You can use whatever CRM that you would like, follow up boss, go high level. Um, you can use so many different kinds of services to help you automate the text messages, emails and everything so that mm -hmm. you're following up with them to be able to get that done. And so now getting them to book an appointment, you can use Calendly, you can use Gohala, like you, you can use so many different types of software. Once Hub is another one that you can utilize to be able to have them book an appointment in your calendar and you can link your Google or Outlook calendar or Apple calendar into that. And people now can book. And how you create the entire funnel, just get a domain, go to Namecheap, go to Google domains, get a domain, and then find a web service provider. You can go to ClickFunnels, you can go to Go High Level, you can go to um, Wix, you can use Squarespace. You can, there's so many different types of platform. And, and then once they register for the lead form, it'll go to your CRM, you start the automations. And then from there, once they register, the next page should be where they get to book a, you know, an appointment. You know, and then they book the appointment on your calendar and boom, you show up at the time of your appointment, whether it's on Zoom or it's on a phone call, however you want to process it. And then you get them through the pipeline and you start closing deals. And that is literally the entire freaking process from start to finish. Uh, trying to break it down as much as I can. No, you know, no, the you, you gave out a lot of gems. Um, how do you feel about setting up, like Russell Brunson always talks about, he sets up an email campaign. So after they get in, because he's, same thing you said, he said, traffic you own is worth way more than traffic that's on social media but he has like um once you sign up to stuff he has the email campaigns going out he started doing texts like how do you feel about setting that stuff up do you feel like it's overbearing or do you like the idea of the hook story offer type of thing i like the hook story offer but setting up all the systems and automations you just do it once and it runs by itself forever mm. you, you just have so you just have to set it up mind. once just Get your butt off of the couch, get your butt out of bed and just do it one time. Is it going to work the first time? Maybe not. You might find some kinks. You might find some errors. You might find some things that, you know, may be better for the mm -hmm. process and you just improve over time, you know, but get started. Guess if you haven't already, just get started because you, you won't be able to accomplish anything unless you get started and do something productive. Very true. So what is your approach? to integrating marketing online, social media, and traditional marketing. Like what methods, how can you make them work, especially for the real estate industry? Or do you just disregard traditional marketing? By traditional marketing, do you mean like mailers and, and billboards? Yeah, and all so stuff? like a realtor, like, um, so for example, like realtors, I know what I suggest is like when you're doing uh, uh, a listing appointment, not a listing appointment, mm -hmm. sorry, uh, an open house actually yep. go out and give out flyers and make sure you have a QR code where they can then book a, a private showing or something like that, like combine it. Do you agree with it? Are you against it? If it works, like for some people, it doesn't work. For some people, <laughs> it does, right? So if it works and like you have to do testing, you can't know if it works or not unless you test it for yourself. And you have to have a big data set too. You can't just do like one or two flyers here and there. Mm -hmm. and you know and and get and, and expect a huge result or expect it to work right away you have to do thousands of flyers i mean tens of thousands of flyers to get a really good sample size man so that is one of the key aspects so billboards you don't really know if it works or not unless you like you have a form or a way of tracking it so like you said a qr code maybe that qr code is attached to a specific calendar where you know that comes directly from the flyers or from the billboard or whatever right mm -hmm. so that's a good way of tracking it but personally, I don't like littering and I don't like, uh, you know, leaving anything on paper or I don't like printing. I'm wasting ink and all that stuff for the billboards. Um, I, I don't like any of that. I'd rather, you know, be social and like, you know, stay with social media because you get in front of your uh, audience right away. Everybody's on their phones all day long. And so, like I said, it's the biggest. I, I just posted something about addiction in terms of phones and all that stuff and screens. I already reposted it. <laughs> Thank you, man. And I, and I reposted you reposting it. <laughs> um, but yeah, so from there, uh, like everybody's already in front of their phones. Everybody gets calls and texts and stuff. And so they just click on Instagram, click on Facebook or Google, and then you pop up. 
So it's, it's easier. It's actually more cost effective. That's my experience. Have I tried direct mailers and all that stuff? Yeah, for wholesaling. And I got a few things here and there, but it wasn't a big, it wasn't a big uh, result for me and my personal oh. experience. So um, I've told you, let me go make this call for 30 minutes and we're already over an hour. So I'm not gonna hold you too much longer. I have a few it's questions. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah. What advice would you give to a realtor or a loan officer now starting out? Like what is the top three things you would tell them to do? Learn how to market. Learn how to market yourself because without business, you, you cannot be fed. And the last thing you want to do is, you know, be so financially stressed that you get yourself into a hole and you can't get out of it or put yourself in a position where you potentially might not be able to get out of it. And then you have to go back to work your nine to five or let's say here, here, I think here's the best way to start. If you are becoming a realtor, make sure you already have a job that, you know, pays you well and you have a stable income and you start producing your first couple of deals. And then once you're consistent, let's say you're getting two to three deals a month that you're closing for six and make sure that you're doing it for six months, then you can consider leaving your job because you already have gained that consistency. Um, not only have you gained the volume, but you've gained the consistency to be able to get out of that job, but you can't really gain that consistency unless you have a solid way of marketing yourself and a solid way of selling yourself, a solid avenue that brings you revenue. And what would so, that, what would be one of your, so make sure if you get thinking about getting in the industry, make sure you have a solid job and that you're able to close two to three deals a month for at least six months before you jump ship and do this full time. Yep. Then obviously marketing, it would be number one because you said you need a market to get those deals so you can do that. So what kind of marketing would you suggest? Is it educational, funny or whatever works for you? So I love the education piece of it. Mm -hmm. because the more education you can put out there and the more value you can bring, it's free education. As long as you're giving out free education where you're educating people, people are going to start looking at you as that expert, as the doctor. And so when you're, when you have a certain problem, you go to the doctor, Correct. you know, to be able to get that fixed. And so if people view you as a doctor, it's, it's obvious that they're going to want to work with you to be able to get whatever issue or whatever problem solved. So if you're a buyer, and you don't know what avenue to, to take or you don't know like what houses you should look at, you know, look for a realtor that is an expert in the area or, or you know, the type of homes that you're looking to buy, whether it's multifamily, single family, an apartment or condo, whatever it is, or even commercial, whatever mm -hmm. the case is, um, you, you should find an expert that has been doing this for quite some time. Um, but if you're not an expert and you are going through, um, there's a word for imposter syndrome, where you are, you are trying to become an expert, but Thank you're you not know. quite there yet. <laughs> Leverage the experience of your team. Ooh, I like that. Leverage the experience of your team, because if you tell somebody, I've only been doing this for six months, you're going to lose all credibility. But if you say, it's like my team and I, we've had a, a, a cumulative of 30 years of experience. That sounds a lot better. Three you know. decades of experience. It sounds a lot better. You know, and I've been doing this for X, Y, Z. Like, you don't have to even mention That's it. That's your marketing in you already. You changed it. You said, instead of saying six weeks or three weeks, you said 30 years. And you're like, you know what? Three decades sounding better. I like the progression. It's right. seduction. It's seduction in words, man. Mm -hmm. It's all about attraction. You know, and if you can't attract that person, it's going to be very difficult for you to, you know, be able to attract the kind of clientele that you're looking for. So what would the last tip be? The last tip is to know every, well, the last tip would be definitely to know everything about your industry and to know everything about your market that you're serving, because you can get the client, but how do you fulfill or how do you service the client to the best way possible? So they don't have a bad taste in your mouth and they're fully satisfied because if you don't service them, right, you're going to either one lose the client. And we're even worse off, you get a bad review because this person knows that doesn't even, you know, know what the heck they're talking about. He's just like, I asked this person questions and you know what? This person did never replied. Screw this guy, right? Or this girl, whatever. So you're like, you're I don't want to work with that marketing. guy ever again. 100%. You're wasting your marketing. So one, learn how to market, which would could mm -hmm. be following someone else or um, joining the Learn how to get business. Learn how to get mm. business. That, that, like marketing is part of that, but learning how to gain business and learning how to sell yourself is number one. 
And then number two would be. And number two would be. Me. Number two would be obviously working with learning how to actually sell the product. Because if you market to people and then you don't have, you can't fulfill the order or fulfill the property or whatever you're supposed to do, rentals, whatever you're doing, then it's pointless. It's pointless to, to even push yourself because then, like you said, you get a bad review. And number three is don't quit until you have that expertise. Did I, did I say that yep, properly? You, you nailed it. So okay. sorry, man, you had cut off for just a quick second. And mm -hmm. I was just like, what? <laughs> <laughs> So I, I was, I was just like stuck there. I was, I was just like, wait, what? If you wanted to say, so I was like, wait. No, I, I, I was waiting for you because it, it, like you cut off for a moment. And I, <laughs> but it's all, it's all good. It's all good. But yes, you, you nailed it. You nailed all three. Okay. So now, that's usually the process. I like it. I like it. Now, if you could go back in time and look at the younger you, right? What advice would you give yourself? Would it be to stop squatting the mosquitoes and go into this path sooner? Would it be like go to another 10, 10x growth con as soon as possible? Or would it be you needed that pain for you to have this evolution of the Robert that we see in front of us? Um, if I can go back in time and redo this all over again, and for anybody else that wants to listen to this advice, or suggestion this is what has worked for me but it took me some time to learn just cut off all the bs from your life mm. you know because you know all like and it goes back to the addiction and all that stuff stop drinking stop smoking stop doing whatever you got to do you know to you know to keep yourself basically in in front of something that's distracting you like your phones your screens your tv just if you're going to do something dedicate your life to it even if it's not what you're looking to, if, if it's not 100% of what you're passionate about, maybe you're a realtor and you're not a, pa you know, a passionate realtor, but you know that it makes you money and you know that it'll give you the freedom to be then able to afford to be able to live the life that you want to do or that you want to be, to be able to then, you know, live the life full of financial location and time freedom and you know, whatever, you know, so... If I can go back in time, cutting out all the BS, all the video games and, you know, all the time that I've, you know, that I've wasted, you know, on all the BS, that's number one. Number two is to increase my standard and the bar of how much energy I put out to things, because a lot of people don't understand. And this goes back to the whole vibration thing that you mentioned earlier um, with the law of attraction and the secret. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, you're, you're just like telling yourself all these negative thoughts and it's just like, bro, I gotta get my butt from out of bed. Crap, it's cold outside, or whatever the case is. You should be like, no, I got shit to do. I gotta get my butt to work, you know, mm -hmm. type of deal. Like increasing your energy deliberately and purposefully. Because if you don't do that, and you're just like, I have to be a man today. I have to like show up as a man today, or I have to show up as a woman today. I have to show up for my partner. like. Here's something that I learned from Elliot. I forgot his last name, Elliot. He does um, a lot of training for um, for sales. Um, Andy Elliot, there you go, is the name of the uh, the name of the gentleman. I have given up a lot of my time and sacrificed a lot of my time for the business. And that was from family, for friends, and for everybody, for loved ones as well. I've lost relationships, you know, of dedicating my life to this business. And I have to say that it doesn't have to be that way. And we can get dark about this. It doesn't have to be that way. I've lost a lot of friendships, good friendships too. I've lost, you know, a girlfriend or two in the process, you know, from dedicating my time to this business. And it doesn't have to be this way. Because if you wake up every single day and you're just like, I am gonna show up for this business. I'm gonna crush it today. I'm gonna get sales today. I'm gonna work all my buyers. And you know what? At the end of the day, you're tired, right? You're, you're tired. Your energy is already low because you've drained yourself. You don't really want to go to the gym. You don't really want to, you know, you get back home and, you know, you have, let's say, wife and kids. And then your your, your wife is there and she gets the 10% battery robber or the 10% yes. battery, you know, Malcolm Marcel. It's not you know, left. and then your kids are, are just like extremely happy to be with you, you know, because they haven't seen you all day because you've been working your butt off and they get that 10% battery left, you know, low battery, you know, Mark and Marcel, you know, and it, and it just... 
you know, you're not giving them your all. If you're able to give 100% of your energy into the business, you better, I mean, you better put 100% of your energy into your family and to your, you know, your children, into your friends, into your relationships, because you can do that as well. And then your 10% battery, Mark and Marcel, should definitely be when you get to bed and so you're tired. Increasing the standards, increasing your standards of your levels. Like, how do you increase that? Because I, I definitely go through that. Like when you're at work, you know, I work multiple jobs. Like I'm exhausted when I get home. I feel like I've given everything. That's why I don't even do these podcast shootings on the weekends, weekdays anymore. Because by the time I'm home, I'm like drained. So how do you increase that energy level to make sure that you're always running? Is it with One, the delegation? You take of a deep time? breath. No, you take a deep breath, suck it up, and you get your butt to work for your family and for your friends and get, you know, and do it for the gym as well. Whatever you got to do. I'm a big gym advocate. I know that I'm skinny now because I've lost a lot of weight over time. I had a lot of issues go on, you know, recently, but mm -hmm. you get your butt off of the couch and you go do what you got to do because your body needs to hit the gym. Your body needs to get some exercise and get some blood flow. Your family needs your support and needs the best version of Malcolm that Malcolm can be. And same thing for children. And you're expecting now, right? Yeah, yeah. When when is your when is your baby? Um, anytime now. It's supposed to be the end of August. I'm sorry, the beginning of August. So the end of the month is in a week or so. But um, yes, yeah, any day now. So. So you better not give 10% to that baby, man. Yeah. And congratulations, I, by the way. Thank you, thank you, Rob. But um, my hardest thing is like, the energy levels is definitely different. I don't know if it's because of the pregnancy, but like you said, I try to hit the gym every day. I used to wake up and go hit the gym before work. But like now, when I'm talking about my energy level, it's like, I'm barely sleeping, but I think it's a whole thing with the pregnancy. I think there's something else going on. You're, you're barely sleeping? Yeah, I don't, I don't really sleep. Can I, uh, can I knock you in between the eyes for a moment and just be yeah, yeah. straight up real with you? You need to be doing more because if you're having trouble sleeping, it's because you're not tired enough. When you get on that bed, it's literally, it should be lights out within five minutes. Lights out. You take a hot shower. So you, you know, after you get to, out of the shower that is hot, what happens your body compensates for you know the increase of temperature and it starts decreasing your temperature which allows you to get deeper sleep that's one so then okay. from there you hit the bed right away you knock out completely because you've already done so much you're just like brutally tired you know we've we you know we know how hard slaves have worked you know back in the in the times of you know of the egyptians right you know and so they worked day in and day out why can't we you know, why can't we have that kind of work ethic? They work their lives until death. Why can't we have that work ethic or even come close to that work ethic? You know, to be able to live a better life and to be able to live your better dream, you know, better dreams or, you know, to to out, to out live out your dreams better said. Yes. You know, <laughs> so definitely, you know, do some more. If you're not able to sleep, you're not tired enough. No, you don't need melatonin. You don't need anything. You just need to put in a little bit more work because that will definitely help you go to sleep a little bit better. And you'll get even deeper sleep too, and you'll feel refreshed in the morning. I'm gonna try it, because right now, don't get me wrong, I fall asleep, but I fall asleep at the wrong times. So like, she'll be wanting to watch TV, and I'm like, well, as soon as time we go to bed, I'm just like, I'm on like 100, like, I'm nervous, she's getting up, I'm up with her, like, you. it's just, it's, it's definitely different. Well, that's but, another um, thing, if you're, if you're being distracted, if you're being distracted or something's waking you up, that's just gonna that's gonna make it more difficult, right? So that that's different. Um, but well, if you I, have the opportunity of sleeping, but yeah, I do I do need to give it more, especially after expecting, and that's definitely why I am here with you now, so you can give me advice and help help. So a lot of people don't realize, but Rob is actually one of my marketing coaches. He actually helps me currently with my business now, and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to bring him on because he's just a wealth of knowledge. He's been through so much at a, such a young age that if I'm still able to learn from him, I'm like, how many more people can he impact and how many more people can he help change? Because at the end of the day, at one point in my business, I was going through a rut. I, I left my CRM. 
I was like, I need to figure out how to get more clients. And that's when I come to him and uh, there's very few people on who I bring on who I actually try sometimes. It might be people that I've seen that I'm like, okay, I would like to try, but I can actually vouch for Robert and his system actually works. Education is one of the best tools. I was using that before, but having the right marketer to bring in the people and then you deliver, especially if this is something that you're doing, if you've been in the real estate business or the LO business for a while now, you actually know what you're talking about. So when you combine putting people who need to learn in front of someone who's used to speaking with the right information, it creates, it's, I'm telling you, it works out magical and you'll be surprised at how fast your calendar books up. These are people who are actively looking to buy a house. So Rob is here to give you guys this advice to help you get better. Um, Thank Rob, you, I have nothing but great things to say about you. Your system works. You've helped me cre increase my CRM. You actually helped set up my CRM because the one I had before was horrible. I do not recommend it. And you've been nothing but helpful. And even when I call you and ask you, hey, Rob, what do you think about this? Nah, don't do that. Long. Just give me a little bit. I'm busy right now. I'll do it for you. What? Yeah. <laughs> you always time to help to make sure that I'm not getting taken advantage because, like, I'm like an old man when it comes to social media. I'm like, I'm not really in tune to. Funnels, what? I was like, well, what's this stuff? <laughs> <laughs> hey, but I, look, sometimes I'll answer your text right away, but sometimes it, it will take me some time, but I'll always get back. Yeah, um, and, that's, and that's the service and the treatment that I like to give all my clients because relationships are everything in this life. Because you can leave your job right now and you may have a relationship that can vouch for you and get you another job anywhere like this. You know, so it's all this life is about relationships and having integrity. And sometimes we lose that integrity from time to time for short term interest, but integrity will be the long haul decision kind of thing where, you, you know, it'll, it'll, it'll just outlast the years. Um, yeah. So just, just to re-explain that. And I, and I, and I apologize. I just got caught up in my own thoughts. So sometimes we lose that integrity because you may have a short term gain. But if you keep your integrity over the long haul, all the relationships that you build, people will remember you of like, this person knows what he's talking about. This person is going to help you out. This person does what he says he does. Mm -hmm. So then they'll remember you. And then from there, they're going to go ahead and reach out to you or you can reach out to them for a favor or whatever. And they'll be more than happy to help you out because you've helped them in the past. So that's usually it's that's usually how it works. Um, right. But yeah, man. Where can these people go? Because you haven't shot out your Instagram. You haven't shot out anything. If I want to work with you, I'm watching this podcast. I'm like, yo, this is the man who can help take my business, which he can. Whatever you are, he can help tremendously increase the amount of business you're getting. It's it's not a joke. It's it's facts. I can 100% guarantee that this guy can help generate more leads and more traffic in your business, especially if you listen and follow what he says, though. If you, if you do it, if you sign up for it and you don't do what he needs to be done, he can only push you so far. But where can they meet you at? What can they do? How can they reach you? So my Instagram handle, by the way, I'm just here to give. I, I don't really need any, anything in return, man. But if you really want to reach out to me, um, my personal Instagram is the Robert Gill, the Robert Gill uh, with one L. Um, and my uh, business is tuned up marketing, like tuning up your car type of thing, tuned up marketing.com. Um, and then you can just book an appointment with me anytime you'd like. So there, I have my calendar on there as well and for my team as well. And if um, one of my team members or uh, account advisors that are on those calls, if you request to speak with me, I'll go ahead and, you know, and book some time on the calendar just for you if, you know, if, if you really want it to be that way. That's simple. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you, Rob. Um, this is another episode of Real Estate Unfiltered. I hope you guys have learned something. We dropped a lot of gems. Robert is a great marketer, and I hope you took notes. Or if not, just hit the replay button and watch it from the beginning. Over and out. Appreciate you, Rob. Thank you, man.